Welcome back to nucleotide metabolism. In this video, we're going to go over the main precursor to all nucleotides that we're going to make, and that is the synthesis of this molecule shown over here on the right, which is called PRPP. PRPP stands for phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. Now, there's a couple of things you should notice about this molecule. Number one, it's basically ribose 5-phosphate. Here's the ribose ring right here. At the 5 position, we have a phosphate, because after all, it comes from ribose 5-phosphate. But instead of just having a simple hydroxyl group at the 1 prime position, it has a pyrophosphate group. Two condensed phosphate groups is a pyrophosphate, and so you call this phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate. And it turns out this molecule is made from ribose 5-phosphate through an enzyme called PRPP synthetase, whose full name is phosphoribosyl pyrophosphate synthetase. All right, and it turns out that PRPP, shown over here on the right, is going to be used in both purine and pyrimidine synthesis as the starting point for the ribose ring, and eventually will remove the 2 prime OH group to make deoxyribose, but that's done a lot later. So this is going to be the five carbon sugar for all nucleotides that we're going to see. Now the ribose 5-phosphate, we should remember where that comes from. And if you think back to probably what you did at the very beginning of biochemistry 2 or in biochemistry 1, around the time that you probably talked about glycolysis, you talked about its sister pathway, the pentose phosphate pathway, or the pentose phosphate shunt. And in terms of the non-oxidative part of that, we have ribose 5-phosphate. So it turns out that the cell can actually siphon off the ribose 5-phosphate and turn it into PRPP. Now, other than the fact that it is ribose 5-phosphate with a pyrophosphate group on it, you should notice another thing also. If you look at this ribose ring, and for a minute imagine this pyrophosphate group is not there, you should think to yourself, where do I see the, the nitrogenous base? So the adenine, the guanine, whatever it is. Is it going down as the pyrophosphate is here, or does it go up? Well, it's the latter. The nitrogenous base in any nucleotide that we're going to have. So if it's ATP, DATP, GTP, anything, I don't care what it is, even NAD, the nitrogenous base or whatever is up here goes up. All right, yet this pyrophosphate goes down. And you should think about why that might be. And the reason I'm gonna ask that is because in the next video, we're gonna actually go into purine synthesis, all right? But you should ask yourself, why is this in actually what we would call the alpha configuration? Because all nucleotides are in the beta configuration. Why is this in the alpha configuration? Well, I'll hint at it, but we're actually gonna look at a mechanism in the next video, or one of the next videos. And it turns out that, for the most part, the addition of the nitrogenous base is done in an SN2 reaction mechanism. It's an SN2 or an SN1, but mostly you can consider it an SN2. So the, the nitrogenous base nucleophile will attack from the top, causing loss of the leaving group. And remember, you get inversion of configuration. So here it has alpha stereochemistry. When the nitrogenous base attacks, it'll now have beta. So it's re a requirement that PRPP has to have this pyrophosphate group going down. And because the nitrogenous base is added in an SN2 fashion, that's going to favor the nitrogenous base being up okay, whenever we make nucleotides. That's very important consideration because if you were asked to draw this structure of PRPP, this has to be going down, okay? So hopefully that makes sense. It also turns out PRPP synthetase is an allosteric enzyme. And in a couple of videos, we're gonna talk about the regulation of all of purine synthesis, and we'll see how this enzyme in particular is regulated. All right, so this is PRPP synthetase. We get ribose 5-phosphate from the pentose phosphate shunt. We, we pyrophosphorylate it and make PRPP, all right? And that's going to be used as the starting point for both purine and pyrimidine synthesis. All right, make sure to like this video and subscribe, and in the next video, we're going to go into purine synthesis, which is going to be a two-video process. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to the channel for future videos and notifications. Thank you.